Hello everyone, welcome back to the Psychotic Break build series. In this video, I have a relatively straightforward project. I need to take the weapon bar for Psychotic Break and start doing some modifications. I was testing out some ESCs and I realized that to test this properly, I need to finally open up the center hole. Currently right now it has a hole down the center that is five millimeters and I need to open that up to accommodate the needle bearing, which is 0.75 of an inch or about 19 millimeters. So I'm going to take this eighth inch end mill, kind of swirled around inside there and open that hole up. So this should be a little bit interesting because this is hardened S7. So let's see how it goes. I have several modifications planned for this weapon bar. Um, I think in one of the earlier videos, I honestly can't remember which one it was, I was talking about how when you buy stock, you buy it as like a quarter inch, but it usually comes a little bit over. So I wanna say that this is maybe 0.265 or something like that instead of 0.25. So at some point I'm going to have to shave this down and actually get a little bit thinner because I need this to actually be 0.25 or I think I'm gonna go maybe a little bit thinner like 0.24, something like that. I'm saving a lot of this till the end of the build because I want to see exactly how much weight I have. Ideally, I want this weapon to be as heavy as it can possibly be. I don't want to start shaving this down and then realize I have, you know, 50 grams extra. So I'm kind of waiting until the very end to see what my weight situation looks like, and then I'll shave just what I need off of this. But for the actual testing of the weapon, this bearing, as you can clearly see does not go through this hole in the middle because it is a five millimeter hole and I need it to be three quarters of an inch. So this is kind of a barrier for me to properly test the weapon system up front. So what I'm gonna do is bring this over to the Tormach, clamp this down, use this eighth inch end mill, which is uh, made for like stainless alloys and things like that. It is made to cut harder materials I'm going to use that and basically just run an adaptive, adaptive clearing that's just gonna kind of swirl around in that inside and just slowly open up that hole. It should be relatively straightforward. I've actually already opened up this hole on um, panic attack, anxiety attack. Uh, the previous version robot that this was used on, it was a four millimeter that I opened up to five millimeter and that went fine. Um, so yeah, it's gonna be a little interesting. So let's get over to the mill. I'll show you the um, clamping and um, setup of this and then we'll cut it open. So here is what the setup looks like inside the mill. I just have a couple one, two, three blocks, a couple studs um, into T-nuts inside the table, and then I'm just using those as um, spacers to kind of hold it off the table. Now I don't care if the x-axis or the y-axis are lined up at all. I mean the weapon blade could be like that, it could be like that, it doesn't really matter. The only thing I care about is indicating the zero zero because we're not going to be really moving around all that much. We're just going to be opening up this one hole. So what I did is grab a drill chuck and I put in a number seven drill which ends up being about the same size as this opening. So you can see it is um, quite snug in there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this drill in the chuck and then just when this is nice and loose, kind of, um, you know, very carefully plunge this down into this hole and then zero the machine off, tighten everything down, and I know that's gonna be my zero, zero. So this is the lazy and the simple way to do it. Um, I've done this many times with dowel rods or anything like that. If you have a known reference, which is this hole, you can just kind of line it up with the line of the spindle, zero off everything, clamp it down, you should be good to go. So this is good. If you watch really closely right at the tip when we go in, it's not moving at all and we're also not spinning the bit inside which means that it might be scraping against one edge. So this all looks good. I'm going to go ahead and zero this all out. So we just need to zero out the Z. Um, so we'll just touch off the top of here, put in the end mill, and we're ready to start machining.
I ended up stopping this program because I forgot that in my model in SolidWorks, this is actually thinner. Uh, this is actually 0.26 or somewhere around there, but I made it like 0.22 or 0.21. So it thought it was going all the way down, but it was only coming to about like right there. Um, so I just adjusted that. Now it's gonna go all the way down and do a full depth cut. So let's try that again. Okay, so let's try this again. So I'm getting a little bit of chatter in here when you hear it coming around. And I think that chatter is the um, ships recutting. Unfortunately, I can't really get the um, nozzle close enough in there to clear the chips out. So it's just recutting some of those chips and you're hearing a little bit of chatter from that. In terms of feeds and speeds, I'm running at 1500 RPM. The actual cutting is done at about 10 inches per minute. Of course, I'm doing full depth of cut and my step over or the width of cut is about five thousandths of an inch. So this is, you know, not very aggressive. It is um, really conservative, but it gets the job done. Once the bulk of the material is removed, I want to run contour passes just to kind of come in and clean it up and open it up a little bit. I had a little bit of um, stock to leave on the adaptive operation so that it was a little bit undersized and then I can come in and run a contour just to slowly open it up. I'm not looking for a really tight fit with the bearing. My thinking here is that if I have to hammer in the bearing, they're gonna be so tightly coupled that a big hit coming into the weapon is going to possibly shatter or damage the bearing somehow. So I want just kind of a loose, not really slip fit, but I want to be able to put the bearing in by hand, not really have a lot of play, um, but it needs to be you know, somewhat tight to be held in place, but I really, really don't want this to have to be pressed in place. So it's just a matter of running a couple different contours and just kind of opening them up maybe by a thousandth or a two thousandth of an inch each time until I get the fit that I like. So here is the finished weapon. You can see the bore inside there is nice and shiny. Uh, the Tormach does leave a pretty nice finish on this. Uh, the thing they have to know about machining hardened materials, as long as your setup is rigid enough and you do the proper feeds and speeds, you're not gonna have an issue. And that end mill I used is perfectly up to this task. So yay, win for the Tormach. Um, it's a nice tool to have. Um, Overall, I got this um, just a little bit oversized. If we set it on there, you can see there's 
maybe a tiny bit of play. I don't know if you can see that on camera. It's probably maybe about a thousandth of an inch too big, but that's totally fine. I've got the five bolt holes here to hold it. Um, it's not really an issue of being centered or anything like that. So this should be just fine. I'd rather have it a little bit bigger than too small where I had to hammer the bearing in as I said previously. So yeah, this is all good. I think um, next step in this is to start building the body, get some of the mock-up for the actual chassis and body together and then uh, maybe start making some pieces and start getting everything together. So as always, thanks for watching. Um, be sure to check out the next video in the Psychotic Break series and check out all the links below for how to follow me on Facebook and support my channel and all that good stuff. Thanks for watching and see you next time.